I'd also like to congratulate the 16 new members, which included juniors, sophomores, and seniors, and their families. I'd also like to thank Ms. Katz, Dr. Robinson, and Mr. Turner for speaking and attending. Thank you, and this concludes my report. Thank you. And now we'll have a report from Rachel Webb, uh, South of Lathrop High School. Well, South of Lathrop High School has had many exciting events that have taken place this past month. During the week of February 27th to March 2nd, the Lady Chargers Sioux Squad defeated Berkeley, Oak Park, and South of High to win the State A District. This is the ninth time in the past 10 years the Lady Chargers won the district. Congratulations to coaches Michelle Marshall and Cynthia Maxwell and the Lady Chargers for their repeated success. During the week of March, this reminds the boys' basketball team defeated Detroit Henry Ford High School, but were defeated by Oak Park High School during their, their next game. On March 2, 2012, the South Lake of DECA program received notification that they were awarded the silver level of certi certification for the 2011-2012 school year. Of the approximately 1,500 school stores across the nation, only 17 were awarded the silver certification this year. Congratulations to Dr. Veda Cook and the Lake of DECA team. On March 5, 2012, three DECA students and their advisor were the guests of Comcast for Mayor Brenda Lawrence's State of the City Address at the West End Hotel. The ACC MMA test was held for all district juniors on March 6, 7, and 8. Students from the ASC classes visited Dan Miller in Fox 2 today. The students got to meet Mr. Miller and saw the workings of the studio. On March 24 through 27, two of the National Honor Society teams will present at the state level conference. The two presentations will be Underclassmen, Ultra Extravaganza, and Powerfully Pink by the NHS Rosies. Student Congress will also be presenting at the state level conference with Homecoming Our Way. Um, South Lake will host their next blood drive in the library on March 16, 2012. That is my report. Thank you. Um, well, we're just going to keep moving on tonight because we have a <coughs> wonderful agenda as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to give away to the superintendent uh, for her report, Dr. Mm -hmm. Cook Robinson. Um, I'd first like to bring attention to the beautiful artwork that I love. If you're looking to see the mass and the <coughs> beautiful community, come on down and take a look. The artwork is from Atwood School, and it was done by our elementary students. So you can see how beautiful it is. I'd like to begin by just having a shout out to Southfield Lathrop High School and the students that attend Mr. Hank Wendowski's Autism Spectrum Disorder class. These young people were invited to Fox News to do tours. And you know, they rarely do tours these days, but they took on these students. And if you will look at the screen, you will see a picture of the class with the sportscaster there. And they are right behind the Channel 2 news desk. And they were just so excited to be there and to have that opportunity. Reporter Lee Thomas also took time to speak and interact with our students, and I think that's the next picture that we have. <coughs> and as you can see, he took a picture with one of our students there. So I just wanted to share that with our board, that our students, our high school students, um, that have challenges, are out in the community, and learning about various aspects of radio and broadcasting. I'd also like to bring to the podium this evening Mr. Vincent Cookwood. Uh, I had the opportunity of meeting Vincent a couple of weeks ago when he brought the Legacy Mobile to Adler. I was so impressed with the work there, and especially after he told me he was a Southfield Public School alumni. I was really excited. <laughs> so he's here this evening just to share with us information about the MRI experiential tours and equipment and American Legacy Magazine Mobile Museum. Inviting me out here today. Um, it's an honor uh, and a privilege to be here to speak with you um, on this evening to the board, uh, the superintendents, and the staff, and the um, community as well. Uh, when we came out to Adler on February 28th, we were invited by uh, Principal Tate, and we, we worked on it for weeks in advance with uh, help from Mrs. Uh, Jackie Robinson in the PR department, and the event just it was so. It was such a great event. Uh, the city of Southfield, the education department, was so welcoming to us. Um, I represent uh, MRA Experiential Tours and Equipment. Uh, 
uh, and we collaborated with American Legacy Magazine to turn the pages of the magazine, which is an African American publication that uh, celebrates African American history and what we what African Americans have done uh, in our society. Uh, we teamed up with the magazine and created a mobile exhibit. And on that exhibit, you'll find photos, you'll find images, you'll find uh, stories, multimedia that talk about African Americans and the, and the things that they've done um, in our society. So. Um, MRA Experiential Tours has, has been doing this for uh, several years. Um, we build mobile exhibits and we're really pushing um, lately in the last couple of years our educa mobile educational outreach program and, and that's, what, that's what we really want to uh, push mostly. Um, that's why we were so happy that Southfield were able to uh, welcome us out uh, and hopefully this is a, a, um, a relationship starter so that we can bring out other exhibits to the schools. One thing that I wanted to highlight is that um, just before the Adler event, we were in Philadelphia and we were also in New York City. Um, we've been other places, especially in the month of February. However, the students from Adler stood out. Um, we invited other schools to come out, MacArthur, McIntyre, Brace Letterly. And one thing I noticed, and uh, let me mention that the founder of American Legacy Magazine was there as well. He flew out from New York. And a lot of times on the exhibit we have several computers, and we from time to time see kids get on the computer and they may check their Facebook, and they may check YouTube. Um, and I'm not just saying it because I'm in front of you guys today. Not one student out of over 700 that were able to tour the exhibit got on anything besides what they were supposed to do on those computers. They looked up African Americans that they didn't know. Uh, the teachers didn't have to tell them what to do. They were on it, and I didn't have to say one word about what they were looking on the computer. So it just warms my heart. Uh, it warmed the American Legacy founder's heart, uh, Principal Tate. They all took notice of that. Um, so it was, it was a really special time. We, um, I just want to uh, mention that MRA Experiential Tours uh, President, Harry Kurtz, who allowed for the exhibit to come out, the Southfield is here, uh, if he would stand for me or wave his hand. Uh, he, he's <laughs> When I mentioned to him that we wanted to come to Southfield, uh, one, because we established a relationship with uh, Principal Tate, and he was very warm with us. We met him at another event. Um, and I've actually worked with Mr. Tate before. Uh, he kind of is a mentor towards me, uh, Principal Tate. But I told uh, Harry Kurtz that I went to Kennedy Elementary School years ago, uh, and then after Kennedy, I went to Thompson. Uh, unfortunately, I left the district uh, for high school. Um, and continued my studies in undergrad at Wayne State, and I received my master's from Wayne State as well. Uh, but I always credited it all back to Kennedy Elementary School and Thompson Middle School, and that's where I got my start. That's where I learned to respect my elders, things like that. Uh, learned how to uh, get good grades and, and motivate, and self-motivate, and things like that. And from what I saw in Adler, the teachers, uh, Dr. Cook Robinson, all the way, you know, even Mrs. Katz was there uh, that day. It's, it's all around the city, it's all around the school, so the kids have no choice but to be successful. And it's such an honor and a privilege to come back uh, years later and see that um, you all, the city, uh, some of you guys were here when I was back in school, were a big part of, of my success right now, and I just want to thank you for that. Um, hopefully in the future we'll be able to bring some more uh, different exhibits that we have uh, focused on educational outreach to maybe some other schools and we can continue to bust uh, other schools over if you know if all of them can't make it. I believe Adler has close to 500 students, but uh, we were able to get other students. So it was close close to 800 students come out that day, and I don't think there's another time where you can get 800 students in a matter of six hours to view an exhibit such as this without having to uh, take them across the town or pay for all these expenses for it to for it to for them to experience and immerse in something like this. So. Uh, on behalf of MRA Experiential Tours and Equipment and American Legacy Magazine, we want to present something to, uh, I'm going to present it to Dr. Wanda Cook Robinson, but this is for the whole, uh, the whole board and the whole city. We have a, uh, uh, this is a scale model truck of the exhibit that we brought to you guys. So. So again, we thank you for having us. Thank you for having me tonight. Transform the pages of the magazine into a 
exhibit that talks about and celebrates the history and culture of African Americans. And as you look around, you'll be able to see those different artifacts, different pictures, people you may recognize and people you may not recognize. Read the information, and if you guys have questions, let me know, okay? Students 
um, types of disabilities in my classroom. I teach students from kindergarten through fifth grade. So quite often throughout the day, they're all in my classroom at the same time. Um, this year we are fortunate enough to change the program a little bit. I am no longer considered a self-contained classroom. My students are on a general education teacher's caseload. They come to me for service, for reading, and for math. They receive their science and social studies in their gen ed classrooms as well as their specials, you know, gym, music, art, and, um, and lunch and all of that. While we're waiting to get started, I would like for you guys to think about what it was like in the classroom when you were in school, when you were younger. What did your environment look like? How was the delivery of the instruction? What did it look like? Traditional classrooms, you would see blackboards. You would see teachers lecturing, a lot of paper pencil tasks, worksheets, tons of worksheets. But not in the 21st century classroom. It looks a lot different. In our classrooms, you see interactive whiteboards, you see iPads, you see computers. Children are able to express themselves not only on paper and pencil, but with project-based um, learning. You see center-based learning in our classrooms today. So it looks completely different than it did many years ago. And as society changes to this digital global society, us teachers need to change with time and look at the way we deliver instruction. And technology is a huge part of the 21st century classroom. IDEA requires specially designed instruction, which means <coughs> teaching students and methods used by the teacher to instruct students that have special needs in a general education setting. And Southfield has adopted the philosophy of differentiated instruction. You want to scan down? <laughs> Thank you. Differentiated instruction is a huge component of the way we all deliver instruction here in Southfield. In differentiated instruction, the philosophy is that all students are not alike. They learn different, they have different learning styles, they need the delivery to look different for them, and we're meeting all our students at the level that they are at, whether they're general education students or they're students with special needs. And assistive technology supports differentiated instruction, SDI. You have different components of assistive technology. You have low tech, you have medium tech, and you have high tech. And the two devices that I would like to talk about today that have made the hugest impact in the way I deliver my instruction and in my classroom is the interactive whiteboard, which is the smart board, and iPad. Last January, I was fortunate enough to receive a smart board in my classroom. And when I got it, I looked at it, and I was not checking, and I said, okay, what am I going to do with this? i got to figure it out. So I started playing, playing, and I had a little bit of training on it prior to receiving it that I had forgot because my training was actually in August. So once I began playing with it, I said, wow, this is the most amazing tool for our students. And it changed my whole philosophy, the way I teach in my classroom, because of the facial expressions, the interaction, the engagement I saw in my students, the retention. I had students that um, had ADHD. They couldn't focus at a difficult time. Now with the interactive whiteboard. They were up there, they were engaged. When other students were at the board, interacting and touching the board, they were watching the other students. They weren't looking at what else was going around the room. So that really made a huge impact. I'm fortunate that in my um, building right now at Vandenberg, that all teachers in our building have smart boards. I was so excited with this uh, smart board that by April, four months later, I was asked in the special ed department, I want to be certified and I want to train others in our district. I was lucky enough that they sent me for training. I became a certified smart board trainer. This fall, I began training some gen ed teachers in my building and now the special ed teachers in our district. It is an amazing tool. The iPad is another wonderful device. 
it's a mobile learning device, so it, students can take it anywhere. They're learning on the go, they're learning in our classroom, they have access to multiple <coughs> things. And IPAD provides multiple paths for engagement, expression, and helps students with different learning styles connect to the world in new ways. In my classroom, having a K-5 classroom, I can't get up and just lecture. I can't get up and teach the whole classroom at the same time because nobody's on the same page. I use the center-based learning. So some of the technology that I use in my classroom, you'll see students working, in a, working on them in a small group setting. You'll see them working on them independently. When I may be at the back of the classroom teaching a small group, you might see some students on an iPad, some students up at the smart board without me interacting on an activity, some students working on something at their desk, on a computer, and whatnot. And without this assistive technology or just technology in general, I would not be able to do that because many students, when they have worksheets in front of them, especially students that have special needs and need a lot more one-on-one -on -one or small group instruction, they had a worksheet, I go back to it, it's all wrong, they're just marking it, they're, they're there, they're content, but they're not getting any type of learning in, in the process. So with the assistive technology, there's always feedback for them. They are able to, to work on, at work at their functioning level, and the technology supports them at that. I like to think of my classroom as a blended learning classroom, which we don't completely throw away traditional teaching, it is incorporated into the 21st century classroom. However, technology is the hugest piece in the 21st century classroom. So I'd like you to take a look at a short video, and it's uh, a clip of some of my students in my classroom working with um, and with different types of technology.
extremely excited. And that is why I changed the way I teach. I'm so fortunate that I have an opportunity in this district to receive the type of technology that I have received. Last, um, or two weeks ago when I presented at CEC, I kind of surveyed as I was talking about the smart board, I was talking about the iPad, and I, I surveyed the participants, and I had about 60 participants in my session. I said, how many of you have a smart board? How many of you have an iPad in your classroom? Less than 15 people raised their hands. So there are people throughout Michigan, I'm not sure what district, but that so was really shocking for me. And so I had many participants come up to me afterwards and, you know, had many questions. And I said, you know, I had this great opportunity in our district that you really need to push technology in the classroom. And one other thing I did learn um, at the, uh, the conference was the new assessment that will be coming out in 2014-2015. Um, click one more time. Um, smarter, sorry, Smart Balance. Anyway, it, it's going to be online. It's not a paper pencil. It's not a multiple choice with our pencil. So every student is going to be taking this assessment online. That was something that was new for me. And it's based on the core curriculum. So we need to start preparing our students, preparing our teachers for the change that education is taking. I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity today to present. I'd like to open my door to any of you that would like to come and visit it in action. So thank you. And Diane, did you bring someone with you? I did. I brought um, a gen my general education teacher. It was Stacy Lewandowski. He came with me. Oh, she's not here tonight. You brought someone else with you? She did. She's my support. I have Miss Ramsey and I have, I have, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. I have my director, Pamela Bard, and my principal, Terry John, both of them. Thank you so much for your support. I couldn't do it without their support. Everything I have is because of them. Fantastic. Thank you. 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 Is Jackie Robinson, our PR marketing manager, and she is going to share an update with the board and the community on Revolution Read. Good evening. I'm so glad you came out to join us today, and I want to thank the board for your leadership. I want to thank the cabinet for your service, and I want to thank the superintendent for your vision. Tonight, I am very excited to share with you an initiative that's for the entire community. This is something that we believe is going to have a great impact on our students and help make sure that they're able to compete globally and just take them to the, <coughs> next, to the next level. So we're really excited about this initiative, and I'm happy that I can share it with you tonight. As we're warming up, we all know about Southfield Public Schools. This is a, a tremendous district. We have many programs that other districts wish that they had. We have the International Baccalaureate Program, which is one, uh, we're one district of just a few in the state that offer this program for early elementary through high school. We have the uh, AP Prep Program. We have the STEM Program, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And our students are already in high school getting grants for these programs. I met some students at Southfield High School uh, I think he was an 11th grade student. He was already receiving grants because of his work in engineering. He already submitted. He received multiple grants. And so our district is on the move. We have these programs. We have these services. We have things to offer that other districts don't have. There's something else that we have in South We have a lot of businesses. We have businesses that are looking for skilled workers. We have over 100 Fortune 500 companies, over 9,000 businesses. And these are businesses that are interested in partnering with us. They are businesses that are looking for a special skill set. They're looking for specific things from Southfield Public Schools, and those are things that we definitely want to deliver uh, to these businesses. We want to make sure that our students are positioned. You know, it doesn't make sense to go through school and you don't have the tools you need to do the job. And in Southfield Public Schools, if, if we're anything else, we're all about business. We're about making sure that our students are prepared. And so there's one thing, there's one thing that stops us. It's a big issue. It's an issue across the nation. And that's the issue of literacy or illiteracy. Illiteracy is a big issue nationally, <coughs> Oakland County, Wayne County, Macomb County. It's something that we really have to take a look at as a community and wrap our arms around if we want to see a change. And we're 
we're talking about a change here. We're not talking about status quo. We're talking about a revolution. We're talking about upsetting the apple cart and doing something entirely different. I want to share with you just a few statistics. These are national statistics, but they kind of give you a, a picture of where we are with, with the issue of literacy. It's estimated that by fourth grade, many students, maybe as many as two-thirds, have fallen off of their uh, reading level and they're reading below reading level. That's a huge statistic, two-thirds. So once that cycle begins, they become discouraged and it becomes a treadmill. 13% of all 17-year-olds are functionally illiterate. What does that look like? That means that you can't read your textbook, you can't work a checkbook, you can't read a bus stop sign, you can't even look at your, if you get prescriptions, you can't read the prescription label. You're embarrassed and you're hum humiliated. And many of these children drop out of school and they just quit trying. In fact, 85% of juvenile offenders are students that have reading issues. They're students that can't read. Why should they keep trying if they can't read? They're discouraged. <coughs> So what are we going to do about this? Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do about this. We want to wrap the whole community around this issue and create a culture of reading, a culture that embraces the love of reading, a culture that embraces lifelong learning. I can remember when I was girl, I read everything. I read, uh, Mr. Turner called me a nerd. I read dictionaries. I read history. I read science fiction. And I know many of you love to read. I have a friend who he loved reading so much that he was reading at night by his, uh, he had a kerosene lamp that was part of a science kit. He happened to set uh, his brother's bed on fire while he was reading, but, but he loved to read. And we want to mobilize the members, all members of society around the issue of reading, to restore this love of reading. And I'm going to tell you how we're going to do that. Can I do this? <laughs> well, I was hoping for my, my beautiful slide, but I'll just show you the picture. This is Revolution Read. Revolution Read is more than an initiative, it's a movement. Revolution Read is something that we want to use to reverse the trend of illiteracy. illiteracy. It's a call to action. It's a movement to restore the love of reading in our students, and it's a determination to make sure that our students are fully equipped. We have many partners in this initiative. It's been so exciting that Christian and I have been out in the community and the superintendent. We've talked to the principals. We've talked to the teachers. We've talked to the union. We've talked to faith-based leaders. We've talked to the businesses. We've talked to everyone who would listen about this initiative. And we've gained many partners. Mayor Bridget Lawrence is a partner. The mayor of Labor, Labor Village is a partner. Southfield Public Library has joined us. Scholastic, which is a book uh, company that's over 100 years old. I think they're 90 years old. They have a history of teaching children to read, helping teachers teach children to read. They are partners and all of our business and community members. So our goal, our plan here, is simple, but it's not easy. Our plan is to ensure that all students are reading at grade level by fifth grade. If we can do that, we can change this trend that we're seeing now. If every student that comes through Southfield Public Schools is able to read at grade level by fifth grade, we can do some damage to those statistics, and that's what we intend to do. We're going to do this by creating a strong summer reading program. I've talked with principals and teachers, and they've told me that, above all else, that we need to prevent summer slides. I'm going to step over here and borrow a water. Because <laughs> I know you don't want to see me licking my lips. <laughs> How many of you have heard of Summer Slide? Just a few. Summer Slide 
when kids are in school all year, they're gaining literacy skills. They're gaining reading skills. And then they break for summer. They go out and they play. They forget all about reading. Surprisingly, students lose as much as four months to five months of nine months of reading instruction. They lose a half a year in just a couple of months. We can stop this. Studies have shown that just by having a child read four books over the summer is the equivalent of going to summer, summer school. Four books. And I think we can do that. The district is, is poised right now to make sure that all of our students, K through five, this summer, are able to go home with four to five books. And not just the books, instruction that connects those students to the help they need to read. <laughs> so this is how we intend to, to work on that issue. This is just one of the things we want to do. We're developing a website, which will launch just this week, Revolution Read. It will give parents tips, information to help their students read. Simple things like read to your children at night, or point out noses, your mouth, your hands. Simple things that you can do. Read labels when you go to the grocery store. Things that many of us do. So the website will have information for parents that will help them through that. Go back to slide, please. We'll coordinate lots of events. The superintendent is a visionary, and so am I, and we love to have fun. So we're going to plan community events that get us out of the community, gaining partnerships, helping our kids to read, and we're engaging all of the business entities I mentioned and more. What's next? Our next big thing on the agenda, in addition to the website, is a read-in in April with Mayor Brenda Lawrence. She is joining us to read to all K-5 students. We're looking at the Southfield Pavilion. We'll bust out all of the students for a full day of reading. We have children's book authors, people who love to read and love to write, sharing their passion, their enthusiasm for reading with our students. And the students will get to see, what does it look like when I love to read? What can I do with the gift of reading? And hopefully we'll inspire some of them to be readers. Go back, please. We're looking at parent seminars. Scholastic has agreed to help us give parents tools, the things they need to actually meet with them and groom them to help teach their students to read. And books and businesses is an exciting idea. Just imagine if everywhere a parent went, every business, if they were going to the laundromat or to a bank or um, wherever their place of business might be, a, a beauty salon, and if they had their kids with them, there were reading corners, revolution read corners, corners with books, and every business is willing to do this. We're expanding celebrity readers to have more people read this year. Ms. Salaji has seen more people read and celebrity readers than ever before, and is growing. We have politicians. We have people in the entertainment industry, all of them that have a passion and a heart to help kids read. And we're going to allow opportunities for people to be involved. We're looking at developing a corporate club so that people can support this initiative at whatever level that they feel comfortable. And we want to take that support and put it in the classroom take that support and make sure our kids have books, make sure our teachers have the tools that they need to do the job. So we're excited about this. We're excited about the opportunity to partner with the community, to do a community-wide revolution, and to upset what's been a, a disturbing trend and to watch our kids soar. If we give them the resources to read, if we give them the, the support to read, we know that they can do it. And I, I just invite all of you to join with us. Uh, we love to have your input, your suggestions, your support, and your participation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have definitely secured the date of April 10th. We are trying to work out the logistics um, for the weekend kickoff. But I wanted all of my bosses this evening to know that I have signed you up. I knew you wanted me to do that. <laughs> uh, so I have faith.
for every board member to be a celebrity reader. We would love to have our students be celebrity readers. And I would love to have you in the audience come and read to our students. We want this entire community engaged in literacy. If we can do that, then we can raise student achievement. So we're putting the call out to everyone in the Southfield community. That includes if you work here, if you live here, if you walk by here. We want you. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to turn it over to my cabinet. We'll start with Ms. Debbie Trump. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have a couple of informational items that I'd just like to um, speak about briefly, just to, so that you'll um, have the information about them when we get down to that part of the report. Um, the first thing is, is you know, because of the, the economic times that we're in, we've been trying to uh, look at our capital um, improvements and put them in priority as to what is really in dire need. And at this time, we've decided that two of our elementary schools, McIntyre and Vandenberg Elementary, do need to have their parking lots repaved. Um, we do that to ensure the safety of the students, the parents, you know, anyone that could be coming into the schools and to prevent any unnecessary liability to the district also. So um, we've been talking to our architectural firm, but we may not go that way. We may go directly with the civil engineering firm because that way we can save the administrative costs from the architectural firm. And the Shaw group is who, you know, gave us that idea and told us to look into it. So that's what we're doing at this point, to try and save some money there. But the cost of this uh, project is expected to come in around $450,000. So, but it is something that needs to be done. And then in the future also, I'll be coming back to you and um, talking about what we want to do also at this time is have an assessment done by a company of all of our buildings and have them help us look at, see what things that we may not know are coming up so that we're not doing the patch and pray, you know, mode of operation. We want to really look at things and see where to put our money strategically because there's so little of it. So if you have any questions, Dennis Gregory is here. He could um, answer them. And we will be coming back to you, you know, when after we go out for bids for this, and then we'll bring it back for an action item at that time. So, Debbie, I, I just want to be clear. So what we're going to do is to have an assessment of all of our facilities, and then we'll prioritize them in order. Correct. I'm so glad to hear, as I know the McIntyre parents are, that we'll be fixing that regardless. Yes, these, these winters here are not, not good to our paving project. So um, the second thing that we have for information tonight is our district website provider is final site at this time, and it's going to expire this year. So Howard Vito, our Director of Technology, is here, and he's going to explain to you the bid process and who we are going to pick to be our new final, or our new website provider. Good evening. Um, the reason we kind of went into this project was because we knew that with the E-rate the e discounts, the USF discounts, everybody knows what that is, that's that little line down at the bottom of your phone bill where you contributed uh, $2 to the Universal Service Fund. The school district gets a 78% discount on its internet access, its telephone service, but the discount is also available for district web hosting, and we knew that we could take advantage of that discount and save the district some money. Uh, one of the stipulations is that you have to go through a bidding process at the beginning in order to qualify for the discounts. We've gone through the bidding process, and in addition to receiving the discount, we'll also be able to save a substantial amount by switching our web uh, hosting provider. Uh, we were paying about $20,000 a year to have our website hosted, and over a three-year period, we'll be able to save $48,000 over a three-year period. About half of that is the discount, the USF discount, and about half of it is being able to go with a, a different provider. Uh, the provider that we're going to has all the same features and, and uh, tools that we take advantage of on our website, uh, news articles and calendars, and, uh, and that sort of thing. Um, like uh, Ms. Trent said, our current pro uh, uh, contract runs out in October. Uh, one of the stipulations of uh, the U uh, Universal uh, Fund, the E-rate discount, is that we can't start the new contract until July. 
So July 1st, we'll start the process of reloading our website on the, the new web hosting provider's uh, servers and have the, the website up hopefully by the time, right around the time that school starts. Uh, there are three school districts in the area that are using uh, 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 FoxBright, the, the new web hosting provider. Uh, Novi Schools <coughs> uses them, Huron Valley Schools, and also Wayne Risa. So we, we've got some really good contacts. We've, we've talked to them. They're very pleased with the product and service of, of FoxBright. Uh, I've also had an opportunity to look at the administrative interface where you go in and add pages and change pages, and it did seem to be very easy to use. We have about 20 people in the school district that update our website at the building level or the department level, uh, and I think it's going to be much easier for them to keep our website up to date. And I, I do have just a couple websites I can run back on the computer and, and kind of show you kind of maybe the difference of maybe how our website looks and some other school districts nearby and, and their websites. So, just a minute. And also, because this purchase is below the, the bid threshold that requires Board of Education approval, but we did want to bring it to you tonight for information because it is the face of the district. So, we wanted to make sure that you were well aware of what the choices we were making. Uh, switching uh, web hosting providers will also give us the opportunity to kind of revamp our website. I've worked with our, our new PR department with uh, Jacqueline Robinson, and uh, we've had some kind of ideas about brightening it up and changing the colors and just making it just making it easier to use, uh, uh, helping people find things on our website. This is uh, Novi's website. And again, you know, they've kind of got things organized a little bit differently across the top. Uh, they've got district and athletics and, and academics. So we've got just full range of how we set up our, our website. Our screen's a little bit small here, but they've got their calendar. And the calendar is formatted a little bit more like a calendar. Some of the criticisms we've had about our website is that the calendar is difficult to use. You have to scroll way down to find uh, just the thing that you're looking for. Here is Huron Valley's website uh, over in the Milford area. And yeah, again, our screen desktop here is a little bit limited, but, <coughs> but again, you can see kind of a, a different look and feel to their website. And finally, the last one I wanted to just briefly show you was Wayne Reese's to kind of give you um, really just the idea that we, we do have kind of an open palette with our website, uh, working with our, our PR department. I think it'll be just a wonderful opportunity to kind of freshen our, up our website, make it a little bit easier to use. Any questions or anything else? Yeah. Um, question slash comment. I would love to see our school website, or I should say our district website, be able to link to these meetings in like a, a form of where you could, maybe you weren't able to come, or maybe you can't catch them on TV, but you can click much like our city website. Um, so that's just a little, mm -hmm. I don't even know what to call it, but dreaming. No, that's, that's a very good okay. suggestion. Uh, in fact, we've got a uh, video streaming server that we can kind of take advantage of that, where we could uh, load the video from the, the board meetings on that and, and be able to distribute it over the internet through our website. That's, that's an excellent idea. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, most of my report is contained in the action items in uh, 5A, but I do bring a labor relations update, and I want to inform the board of where we are with our current negotiations with the uh, SMSPA group, which is the South Coast Michigan Education Support Personnel uh, Association. Uh, on February 28th, the district found ourselves at an impasse with our bargaining. So we have contacted the uh, Bureau of Employee Relations, Employment Relations and uh, requested the assistance of a mediator to get things back on track and hopefully bring the parties closer together with regards to the issues that are still at the table. 
We stay uh, diligent with the issues that we have and the uh, proposals that we present as they do. And uh, I look to bring a report to the board very soon about the next steps as we get closer to a successor agreement. Good evening, and I also have a very short report, and actually my report was all under the superintendent's report, but I just want to say again how wonderful the American Legacy uh, Project was, and I also want to thank Denise also for her presentation and the empowerment that we wish to empower and, and project for all of our teachers to create teacher leadership and provide that kind of empowerment because it is necessary and very important as we continue to move forward good instruction and good teaching. Thank you. Mr. President, I'd just like to add that Mr. Tig is now here. I think he probably went to the Battle of the Books first. Um, I'd like him to stand. He's responsible for connecting us with the resource, um, with the Legacy Magazine and the mobile. And Mr. Tig, I'm going to have you come to the podium just a minute and talk about that. Good evening, board. Good evening, yeah. everyone. Uh, American Legacy uh, Project was a very wonderful experience uh, for the Adler community and Southfield Public School community. Um, Mr. Harry Kurtz was, was instrumental in coming out and donating the truck uh, for everyone to come visit. I thought it was a good experience for kids. Uh, just to highlight our accommodating uh, activity for African American History Month, kids did really well and uh, it was a wonderful experience. I thank you all that came by. And Thank you. Also, I'm just noticing this artwork around here <laughs> at the school. So, kids doing <laughs> wonderful things. Um, Battle of the Books program over at the Pavilion. Uh, we have 13 teams there, and uh, wow. there's a big turnout there too. So, uh, kids doing really well. So, yeah. just thank you all. Well, thank you. Thank you. Michigan Head Start Conference on March 1st and 2nd. 
Ms. Hill has been asked to present at High Scopes International Conference May 2nd and 3rd in Ypsilanti. Picture Day was a huge success in February and Black History Program was also a huge success. Regarding the grant, the award amount of $1,294,451, to date $705,655 has been used, $588,795.13 balance remaining, 54.51% of grant has been used. And Ms. Hill is here. I know we typically like her to wave if she's here and any policy council members. Okay, we have no unfinished business. We're just going to move right to the action items. But before we get through all of those, I want to make a note that there is a recommendation for student discipline. And that's action item 5B is going to require discussion regarding the student hearing that was held. However, privacy of student records are protected under FERPA laws. And FERPA is the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. I'm going to ask for a motion to hold closed session in the tonight session and to reconvene to vote on action item 5B. Mr. President, I move to hold a closed session before we adjourn this meeting to discuss action item 5B, the recommendation for student discipline due to the privacy of student records with FERPA. And that the board reconvene to vote on action item 5B. Is there any support? Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. So that item will be dealt with at the conclusion of this meeting prior to us adjourning. Okay, this time we'll take a motion to open and approve report, the number on this report, the consent agenda. There's no number. I'll take a motion to open and approve the consent agenda. It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions in regard to the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll take a second to take a few calls as well. Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Katz? Yes. Trustee Buchanan? Yes. Myself? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. At this time I'll take a motion to open and approve report 50-50 to Justin Lee and Eisenhower. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and supported. Questions? Do we have some background on that? Yes. Yes, sir. We've been successfully leasing a portion of the Eisenhower School to the Judson Center for the last two summers. The Judson Center runs a summer camp for autistic children. They're a non-profit. And they use 10 classrooms, the gym, and the commons area. And we leased that to them for between June 25th this year and August 17th. And they pay us $17,100 for that. Yes. Is the language pretty much the same as it has been in past years for the contract? Yes. We didn't make any changes. Any other questions? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, will you come to a vote? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Buchanan? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. Trustee Katz? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. President Buchanan? Yes. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I'll take a motion to open and approve Report 5051, the recommendation for contract extension. Support. Removed and supported. Yes. I'm going to ask Ms. Pam Byrd if she will go to the podium and give us some background. This contract is in her office. It's for a very specific service, a very important service, and I'll let her explain it. Good evening, Board. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm asking for this contract to be extended. This is a consultant that has two roles. One is to supervise the psychologist so that they can be able to bill for Medicaid. There was a new law passed saying that school psychologists cannot bill for Medicaid. They must be licensed. 
Our school psychologists are not licensed psychologists. They are certified school psychologists. In order to bill for Medicaid, which is like a medical component, a PhD licensed psychologist must supervise them a certain amount of hours a month to write off their services so that they can bill. Her other role is to continue with the compliance of IEP. So we need to continue her role as a consultant so that first we can continue with Medicaid billing and continue with compliance with IEP. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Martin. Okay. Um, Madam Secretary, you're calling the vote, please. Trustee Smith, yes. Trustee Williams? Yes. Trustee Poole? Yes. Vice President Cash? Yes. Trustee Robinson? Yes. Trustee Lewis? Yes. President Kennedy? Yes. Okay. Uh, we now move into the uh, informational items. Um, uh, let's see, report 5053, which is the purchasing report. <laughs> um, most of these uh, items fall under um, the threshold for that requires board approval. Uh, so therefore, uh, these items can be purchased uh, just uh, by the district without any board action. Um, so you can choose to read that at your own uh, comfort. Uh, the next item, report 5054, is the painting and rehabilitation project. Is that what we just yes. okay? So we've already we've already covered that uh, in report 5055, which is the district website uh, provider, which has also been uh, discussed. Okay, we now come to the public participation uh, portion of the meeting.
two tied in because we've got a, a, a big kind of the engineering society in Detroit has got a big job there going on. A few of the community colleges have a really big uh, engineering job fair and training program going on. When we start our kids in the sixth grade, science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, I know President Buchanan and myself, Vice President Kent, uh, we were just shocked at how elated the congressman was and how interested he was in what we were doing here in South Carolina. <coughs> All right, all right, our Congressman Hanson Clark. And he wasn't here just to be here. He was actually um, really looking to see what we were doing. So I uh, wanted to share that, and um, I think um, uh, uh, building principal uh, Ms. Teague is here. Great event. Um, I, I think now the National Society of Black Engineers is. 27,000 engineers around the country. And this gentleman was sharing his experience, his black experience, in America, coming out of Mississippi, to be a, an engineer to his level. So we, it was a great job, Miss T. Uh, it was not only enlightening to the community and the parents that were at that event, and I'm one of those, I'm one of those board members where no one knows I get in a lot of doors and you don't know what I'm saying. They know you now? Well, yeah, superintendent's given me some ID, so they know now, but um, uh, I like to get into those events. I like to participate uh, in the community, but more importantly, I want to let the community know how uh, impressive uh, an education that we offer in this community. If you, and I talk to a lot of community members that have been here for 30 years, and they talk about how great of an education they got at Southfield Public Schools. And I would always say, well, if you got a great education back then, we're offering a much better education today. So come on back. Thank you. And, and you know, just to follow up on your conversation, we're going to have Ms. T because this was a pretty big uh, event, and uh, just uh, mm -hmm. fill, fill the community in on uh, uh, the whole event. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak, and thank you, Mr. Poole, for the uh, accolades you've given us. We well were very deserved. oh, thank you. We were very fortunate. Um, I, I'm very fortunate to have a, a good group of parents. And last year, they started an initiative called the Night of the Jaguar because we're the leading Jaguars. And the purpose of this event is to raise money for a scholarship fund that they have begun for students who desire to participate in our activities and field trips that are very expensive and they can't afford to participate. For example, our band each year takes a, um, a trip uh, either to Atlanta or Orlando and our eighth graders go to Washington, D.C. and our students are able to apply for these scholarships uh, and indicate their worthiness and the PTA awards them. Well. We always have a, a catered dinner because, you know, if you feed them, they will come. <laughs> we always have our, our band and our choir perform. And this year we were very fortunate that Dr. Matt agreed to come um, free of charge because he came twice, yes. Uh, he wanted to share his experiences and his knowledge and to teach the children that being smart pays. Um, he mentioned the fact that many of our students, they see that athletics pays, they see that entertainment pays, and he wanted them to understand that being smart pays, and that was a message that definitely catches the eye of 11 to 14 year olds, but we were so pleased to have as many parents come out uh, as they did uh, to hear his presentation uh, of the African American stance in America his experiences, as Mr. Poole said, and how that led him um, to where he is today and how all they have to do is put their nose to the grindstone, study, and they can achieve whatever they believe. So, thank you very much. Good job.
I read uh, on my email this week that our academic teams uh, in national competition won 13 trophies. And uh, I'm hoping they'll come before the board at the next meeting so that we can honor them in person. But this is typical of what I read every week in this district. Our students do really well in the world. They do us credit. Uh, one of the things that Mr. Hanson Clark said <coughs> when he walked through the school was uh, in astonishment. All of our students were in the classroom. There were no students in the hall. They were all in the classroom learning, which is what students are supposed to do, and what our students do so very, very well.
you know, let's talk about the issues that really impact, you know, our jobs as school board members and how we uh, uh, keep our districts uh, viable. And the main topic that we were dealing with during this was the uh, uh, passing of the uh, education, uh, Elementary and Secondary Education Act, EFEA, uh, which meant, uh, many of us know as No Child Left Behind. Uh, that act had been sitting <coughs> for years. Um, uh, they hadn't made any revisions to it whatsoever. And there were so many aspects of the, the ESEA, No Child Left Behind, uh, that were detrimental to districts just in our ability to deliver uh, uh, to our students every day. So currently, um, the newest version of the ESEA has been passed by the House and we're waiting for the Senate to sign and then on to the President's desk. But some of the things that are uh, real key to this uh, latest version of the ESEA uh, is and this, you know, for us, is really big because it kind of ties back to our earlier, um, our earlier presentation uh, on special ed. That the you know, uh, punitive aspects of uh, adequate yearly progress (AYP) are going to be eliminated. Okay. So what's going to happen here when we, when we look at uh, AYP? And you know, they're always taking our numbers and matching them up with, you know, what other districts are doing, what charter schools are doing. When you look at the fact that we have such a large special needs population here in Southfield, those students take the same standardized tests as everyone else. And we're held accountable to the same standards for those students as every other student. And it's odd, but you know, every year we see this trend where, you know, after count day, all of a sudden we have this influx of students, which normally would be nice. But the majority of the students that are coming in are students that are special needs students. Now, special needs students, in and of itself, is not a bad thing. We take on all challenges. But the issue is they're coming with no funding because the charter schools where they work are holding on to the money. They're not sending these kids to us and sending us the funds that they collected for those students. They're just sending the students because they don't want to educate those students. They don't want to be responsible for I don't care if I start a fight, you won't know me, and I'm just going to put this out there. They don't care whether or not they're doing the job and educating those students. They're going to dump those students back here. For us, we're not going to take that as Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, sir. So we'll move on. In terms of the ESCA, though, um, some of the other aspects, elimination of AYP. There's going to be better accountability in terms of, you know, really measuring, you know, student progress. And instead of just going by one test on an annual basis, uh, we're going to, they're going to go to multiple measures of student achievement, which is really going to uh, ramp up, you know, what our real success rate is. So when you look at, you know, just these few items in the revision of ESEA, that in and of itself is going to uh, really start to, you'll see a change and how uh, public schools are starting to be graded as opposed to charter schools and what happened. Now, while we were there, the other thing that we were able to do was uh, tour the Finnish Embassy. Now that was a very interesting uh, tour in that everybody there, we didn't want to hear anything about Finland other than about their educational system because all you ever hear uh, on a national level is how you know, uh, American students are not achieving at the same level as students in Finland and Norway and some of these other places. So I wanted to hear what it was that made this educational system so great. There are a lot of things that they do that are really unique in terms of education. For one, they don't have early childhood, uh, uh, you know, they don't have uh, what early childhood, right, early childhood education, preschool, from, uh, from the age of, uh, you know, toddler on to the age of seven, these kids, they play. And that's how they learn. They learn through playing. They start school at the age of seven. So at the age of seven, they're in the first grade. So from the first grade until ninth grade, which is tenth grade, um, they're basically all in the same location. But from tenth grade on, they go into one of two tracks. They either go into a vocational track or an educational track. <coughs> and the educational track means that they're going to go on and continue to master's and PhD. And the other vocational
case in fact they're going to do <coughs> basically the services, uh, construction, engineering, uh, um, electricians, things of that nature, plumbers. So what we saw was that there's such a high value for education within that society that we don't see that exists here in America. Their teachers are valued like, I mean, they're, they're held to the same esteem as their lawyers and doctors and judges, whereas here, all we ever hear about is how public schools are failing and public school teachers are, are failing our students. We know that not to be true here in Southfield because we don't have that issue. We, when we look at all the achievements of our students, it's because of the teachers that we have here that we're able to see the kind of accomplishment that we see day in and day out. So there's a different level of, of uh, uh, how teachers are perceived within their society. We need to adopt those same uh, 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 methods here to start looking at our teachers and valuing what they do. At one point, the teachers in the community were held in very high esteem. I don't know what happened, but we need to get back to that because we have to understand these are the people that we entrust our children to every single day. And how are they going to do their job if they're being beaten down by the media, by parents, and everybody else on a daily basis? That has to stop. But one of the other things that I found very amazing is that they don't even have private schools in, uh, in Finland because they put all of their emphasis into the public school system. All of their tax dollars and everything else goes into the public school system as opposed to how we do it here where, you know, uh, uh, education is divvied up uh, as though it were some type of uh, uh, commodity. And that's what we're looking at right now, how education is being commoditized. We need to be very careful about that right now because we're going to be looking at the, the real civil rights issue of the 21st century is education and educational rights. So we need to be aware of that and continue to fight for a free public education for every student in America. Otherwise, we're going to continue this slide back. So while we're being criticized by politicians and everybody else that want to treat this as a political football, let's be aware of the fact that uh, if, if you're going to criticize us and hold us to the standards of, of Norway and Finland, you, Mr. Congressman, Mr. Senator, need to do the very same thing that the legislators in Finland and Norway are doing in terms of supporting public education.